Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. We have we have not yet been able to figure out the sound on um, <laughs> right. on on the video, but we're here. <laughs> Let's see if we can get us both right there on, on the video. But we're oh, here. right. You were in charge of creating. Here we go. Let's see if we can get us both. Right you can there. just barely hear it. Oh, right. I know. Here we go. I've got to give it you up. Can just barely hear it. <laughs> I know. I know. It's what happens when old school people get together. <laughs> it's terrible. I know. I just feel. <laughs> we need a so fancy uh, production crew. <laughs> old get together. <laughs> it's terrible. I know. Oh, I hear it echo. Is that me? No, that's me. I'm fixing okay. it there. All right. Sorry, Tim I'm and Liam. <laughs> Tim and Liam, Liam are here. They're talking about a Jim O'Dell 65. They found standing good. 25-year-old right. tank. That should be fun. I came yeah. up with uh, Andy, who's a good friend, found a couple of tanks sitting at a local doctor's office oh wow yeah, they're they're uh, they're acrylic six feet tall sitting on a three-foot stand so they're like oh, nice. they're, they're actually taller than three they're closer to uh 42 inches tall acrylic half, half round four foot wide half round oh in nice mid, mid condition so That's we got them. We got them out of there. We're going to, we've got them over to his place. So we're trying to get them set up and see what we got. We're going to sell them. We need yeah. to, uh, we need to so sell them. So anybody looking for a really spectacular um, um, half moon acrylic, 200 gallon, I got two of them. And they're really cool. They're on contact, stainless. Contact they're where? on. They're on angle angle iron stands. Real nice. heavy, one inch angle iron stands. Got real strong, solid, and built semi round, like half circle. So they're really quite nice. So hit you up on your website on uh, or send you an email if you're interested. Yeah, yeah. Anybody oh. interested? Give me a. Contact me uh, through fatherfish at fatherfish.net. I sound echoey. Am I echo or or muted? Do I no, sound I, okay? Yeah, you sound okay to me. Is everybody right, else it's just, sound all right? It's, it's just my microphones. I'm not used to wearing microphones. <laughs> or rather, headphones, you sound good. I should say. Uh, all right, who's here? Let's see. Oh, I didn't do that right. Let's see. We've got Tim's, Tim's, and Leon. Liam, it's not Leon. Liam, Liam's right. fish and turtles, and we've been talking about turtles. We got Joshua Miller and mystery see, snail. Mystery, mystery snail. snail. Yeah, it was the first one in. You get the uh, gold. Well. <laughs> Hi, flying Mayan. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. I fly in my end. Had had an extraordinary comment the other day on on the live stream. I can't even repeat it. It was so <laughs> profound. But we were delighted. It took two ratings to figure it out, but it was just brilliant. <laughs> had had to do with people's willingness to believe stupidity. Oh, yeah. It was it was really really interesting, you know. And was a take on was a take that I had never really seriously considered. But you know, it's really true. The reason people get stuck on stupid ideas is because they hear them and then they get them reinforced somewhere else. And by the time they hear them the third time, oh, it must be absolutely true. Because I've heard this from three sources. So it must be the truth. 
And it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> you know, you tell a lie often enough, and too many people believe it because oh. they think they think that reinforcement <laughs> determines veracity, if right. you will. You know, and it don't. All it determines is that a lie can be told by a lot of fools. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't be another one. Really? <laughs> Who else? ABC. Hey, ABC. Uh, ABC, uh, Aquatic Biotope Creation. Hello, hello. He's saying hello, everyone else. And My Father chat. Fish. <laughs> and Ruben. Fish and Tactics. Ruben. Ruben's here. Fish, Fish and Tactics. Yeah. My favorite. Who is Mally Joyner? That's a new one on me. So hello, That's Mally. That's a new one on me. Hello, Mally. We're going to turn Mally blue. Let's do it. You are uh, part of this show now. <laughs> Brad Hobby saying I sound great. Good. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> yeah, they believe Michael, it, Ruben. <laughs> Michael Long, right. Ruben. Oh, thanks, Hobby. Well, thank you, High Flying, very much. That That's was right. nice. Very, very nice. Kind of you. you know, I don't need you telling me that, though. Mary tells me that six <laughs> times a day, seven days a week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't help it. Hello, Tori. There's Tori. Uh, um, sorry. And Ruben, and, and Ruben says, yeah, they believe it. They believe it. Right. <laughs> they do. Exactly. <laughs> Right, Tori. Hey, Tori. Nice to see you. Tori is one of our one of our leaders. He's 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 a poo over on a on poo our uh, a poo <laughs> right. <-bahs. laughs> we have four poo uh, of which I'm one. Tori's another, and we have two others. You're the friend aquatic by the Brad and aquatic by nature. <laughs> Uh, Poobahs are kind of the, uh, tr the, the the chief trouble resolvers on our <laughs> Discord channel. Yeah. But I'm considering I'm considering a new role that that will be that will be designated exclusively for myself. And and the role okay. is is um and, and I'm, I'm caught a caught between a, a couple of things. Either the Grand Dragon, which has right. echoes of of um, something else, or the Grand Wizard. I think of the Flintstones when they always went to the Grand Poomba. <laughs> the Grand Poomba, right? Yeah, I like Poomba real well. Yeah, I do too. Oh, hey, Sue I just know. packed up the trailer. She's leaving in the morning. Now, All you, right. You, yeah, she's closing on the house tomorrow morning and hitting the road. Good luck on your travels. And I hope everything goes well and you get, yeah, you get where you're going and be careful. And we love you so much. And there's so Rainer. Big, big, big City is Robert. now in Florida. Yes, she made it. She made it. Yeah. She had uh, somebody hacked her uh, uh, messenger account a while back. Like she and I were talking about every day. And then all of a sudden yeah. I got a kind of one of them crazy messages that you knew did not come from the person that you were talking to. So I had uh, to report it and I had to tell her, I think last week in your live stream that, that she had been hacked. So I hope she gets that figured out because Amber, please calm, contact me when you can. I want to see everything. Yeah, I'm hoping she, pops in. hoping she pops in here. I hope so, too. Now, how close is she to you? I know it's a couple, an hour, oh, isn't it? Y'all aren't close, three, close, but. No, not close, close. Yeah. About three hours. About a three-hour drive. That's about this, how far me and uh, Bichon is. This is between Baltimore and New York City. Okay. But that's but still close. close. <laughs> But well, it's still closer than it could be. Closer <laughs> than Vermont. 
Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I will. I will get up to see her. I absolutely will. Oh, she's I'm a sweetheart. Y'all can watch it. Amber, Big City Better. She's a treat. Y'all check her out. Let's see. Let's um, see. ABC. My... Let me see what this is. You commented yeah. on one of my videos of my native stream biotype recently about deep substrate natural food source of, or something to that extent. Can you elaborate? All right, you ABC. Bet you now, let me see if I can find the video that I was looking at. See if I can get it up here real quick. Yeah, we've been talking about and are developing a system called a food web. Here it is, 73 gallon. Oh, I love this tank. Let me show it. 73 oh, gallon. Oh. That, yeah, it's 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 absolutely remarkable. It is. Just oh, my look gosh. At look at this. Yeah. Now, what I'm talking about with this, see the leaves? Mm -hmm. what they, oh, the leaf with litter? The, yeah, the leaf litter. If you make that deeper, it will create, my right. golly, look at this. Look at the, the gobies. The, the, oh, that's the, gorgeous. Look at that, how natural it is. Stunning tank. Absolutely stunning, stunning tank. Uh, the leaf litter uh, is broken down and feeds microscopic life, microfauna, which the fish then feed on. So if you make that more extensive than it is uh, and try to gather some leaves from a stream that are, are, that are partially uh, broken down, you'll be able to get that culture going in there. And it it will be sufficient to feed a lot of those fish. It'll feed them all really. What a fantastic selection. Absolutely, Absolutely. amazing. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Now that's a dream tank right there. Look at Isn't that. that ever, yeah, I, I watched the video how out. it was built, and it's just remarkable. Beautiful job. I love it. Yeah. Look Absolutely at the goby. That was so cool. Yeah. Very, very neat. Thank you for that. Uh, well, I don't think anybody's asked. Let's see. Oh, Patricia said I got my sand to my I got to sand to my cap women, sand to cap my river rock. It was on sale too. Okay. That's at 538. Yep. Aquafinity. Do I know how to treat dropsy? Mm. Um, no. Um, the problem with dropsy, it's, it's in its advanced stage, it's organic. It's, it's an organ that is swollen like a liver or a bladder, not a bladder, a liver or a gallbladder that is swollen. I love fish have gallbladders. They have livers. But the liver can get swollen, and there's really no going back from it. Um, generally, it's started by a bacteria, internal bacterial infection, which typically occurs in the gut. If you catch it early on, you can treat it. There are a lot of different ways to treat it. I find the simplest way to treat it is with crushed garlic that the fish will eat. If it's still eating, uh, obviously you have to get it before it's, while it's still eating. If it's still eating, that, that uh, garlic will kill the gut bacteria, the bad bacteria, and, and be able to reduce the inflammation. Beyond that, it reaches a point of no return where there's really nothing you can do. Uh, it's very sad and, and a really a really traumatic kind of thing for the fish, of course, and often for the fish keeper if it's a you know a prized fish. It is it is not particularly um, 
something that can be passed on to other fish. So you you don't get a whole lot of it in a tank. You'll get one one fish that'll come down with it, uh, and it'll be rare to have a second. So it's not transferred. Um, my best advice is to get them out, get some salt in there that'll slow the metabolism down, treat with garlic, and you can start treating with quick cure or or a sulfa drug. Sulfa drugs can sometimes work. The problem is you can't treat it unless you can get the medication inside the fish, which means it has yeah. to still be eating. If it's not eating, it eat it. you're done. There's nothing really at all you can do. Just try to keep it comfortable. Oh, Crystal. Nice. Hi, Crystal. Nice to see hi, you. Hi, Crystal. My sweet and beautiful Robot. friend. <laughs> Red light robot. Hello, hello. I'll make red light out. Uh, Moderator, turn them blue. You are now blue red light. Stephen P203. Stephen. Hey, Love Stephen. Stephen. Y'all check out his channel too. Stephen's awesome. He's up and coming. <laughs> I don't think he's up and coming anymore. He's made it. Well, ABC says he's uh, only using natural sunlight for that tank. It's a we spectacular have a tank. It is. Sorry, oh, Patricia's mean, birthday. Yeah. Hi, Patricia. <laughs> happy birthday, Patricia. Shall we happy sing birthday. happy birthday? birthday happy to birthday. You. Happy birthday, dear Patricia. Patricia. Happy, Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> and me. You betcha. I don't think we got it together quite good enough there, but you knew what we meant. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're doing, we're uh, we're putting together what I hope is going to be a really high level, high quality video that's going to have um uh, a, a lot of graphics in it, cartooning in it. Um, oh, nice. it it'll be a, a well edited, I, I hope, and will contain um, pictures and videos of aquariums from other people who are doing food webs. Nice. The theme of the, theme of the video will be how to set up a dirted tank with a food web. So look for that. I don't know how long it's going to take to get it produced at least another week and maybe two. Um, Is this the one that you'll be sharing your footage where you went out live or collecting the leaf litter and everything? Is that in this video? Well, I can put it in. I'll try to get some more. Um, I was going to go out this morning uh, collecting with Frank, but he woke up with a swollen foot and couldn't get out. So, Oh, no. So I went down. So anyway, I went down to the bay and caught, guess what? What did you catch? Oh, I got to show you. Clean out my container here. Oh. Boy, that stinks. What did we have? Uh, oh, you're going to love it. Hi, Chris. Tap, how are you? And Susan. Hey, Susan. How are you doing All today? Right. Okay, what are we doing? <laughs> he said, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, Daniel Sweet. White. Did I give it, get everybody that came in? Trainer. Hotline. I think I got everybody. I missed you. I'm sorry. Uh oh, what's he got? Okay, I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> the suspense. <laughs> I know. You're gonna love it. <laughs> oh, I hope not, Chris Trap. He said 
Hopefully none of that Louisiana storm hits Florida. I think we're past oh, yeah. it. Oh, that's good. I'm not sure. Okay, here's what we're looking at. What are we looking at? All right. Hi, Frank. McDaniel, Frank's how are here. you? Frank's here. Okay, what do we got there? Is that a little seahorse? Yes, it is. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. We put them in the water. Wow. I'm getting some of those guys. Look at that. In a wine glass. <gasps> Look at those amazing pygmy seahorses, guys. Aren't they, they beautiful? Maximum one inch. That's a pike so fish in with them. And there's oh, also okay. a, there's also a little tiny starfish in there. In the bottom? Yeah, let me see wow. if I can move them. How hard are starfish to keep alive? Will they live in a tank with the pigs? Oh, yeah. yeah, they're real easy. Oh my um, gosh. I don't know if you can see them or not. Sorry, I'm crying. I think, <laughs> I I know, aren't they amazing? They are. Them. Okay, so I've got a half a dozen here. They're $15 oh, wow. a piece. You can buy them. I'll ship them out tomorrow if anybody's ready for them. I know Emily has been wanting them. There's the oh, starfish. I've been, I've been wanting them forever. Look at that little starfish. Isn't that cool? Oh, my goodness. I want everything in that cup. I want starfish. I know. Yeah. And the big me seahorse. I was just thinking the same thing. I ought to do it that way. Yeah. And they can be kept in a smaller tank, as you were telling me, right? They don't have to have a big extravagant tank. The best way to keep them is in a goldfish bowl. Okay. With what about filtration? Just with like a filter. Okay. What? Yeah, goldfish bowl with a sponge filter, about two inches of sand in the bottom of it. And then what you feed them is uh, live decapsulated brine shrimp. Mm -hmm. You just put the eggs in there and they hatch. Let them hatch out uh, in there. So let them hatch out in there. There's, there's no shell. Uh, but you don't put a lot in. You don't want to put so much in that you felt like you put a little bit in. And they'll hatch in about eight hours. Oh, and wow. You can, you can keep a steady supply of them that way. Uh, and then you want to keep a, an extra gallon or so of water on the side so you can do a 100% water change. Uh, and it's a good idea uh, if it's until you get it really stable. It's a good idea to do regular water changes just to make sure you're keeping it um as clean so as on daily, you want to do like a daily water change or just every couple of days? Every or? couple of yeah, like like yeah, maybe do um if it's a, a like a two gallon bowl, yeah, a two gallon bowl, and you've got a gallon and a half of water in, a couple inches of sand, and a sponge filter. Change out maybe a quart every couple of days. Just, um, yeah. You want to just, you know, you don't want it to go foul. And it, and it could, once it gets stable and established, then it's not going to be a problem. Uh, I kept, I kept a group of them when I was a little kid. Had them shipped up from Florida. And I kept them for well over a year, hatching brine shrimp in a little, a little court jar. And I would siphon, I would net out or siphon out. I would siphon out some shrimp through a silk handkerchief. Mm -hmm. That's what I would feed them. And I fed them every day. And they did really well. They're really very easy to keep. They're pretty hardy. Um, so, yeah, I'll be getting more. I finally found a, a place to get them. Right now, they're really tiny. There are a lot, yeah. of, ba a lot of babies out there. I caught a bunch of babies, and then, oh, I had a terrible thing happen. When, oh, no. when, I, when I catch these things, Frank will appreciate this. <laughs> what, 
when I catch him, I've got Frank this big net. Button. <laughs> I've got a big net I push to the grass. And I stand the net up on its handle and kind of lean into it, which relieves the pressure on my back so I can <laughs> keep going. Anyway, if I see one, I keep them in a jar, in a like one of these, one of these things. And then okay, I'm, yeah. So I have to take, I have to unscrew the lid. I've got it in a floating container, a floating screen box that Frank made. So I got them in there, and I have to unscrew the lid to get them on. So what I'll do when I see one, and then I'll pick it up, and I'll hold it between my lips. And I've had as many as five seahorses holding them between my lips <laughs> until I get the <laughs> jar open and then and then spit them into the jar. I don't spit them in. I just release them. Well, I did that today, and I, I, I don't know what happened. I picked that little guy up. I put him between my lips, and my lips were instantly on fire. Really? On fire. Fire. It was incredible. That will teach you. I, I had never, in years of doing this, I never experienced anything like that. So I don't I think <laughs> I think I know what it was. There were there were some jellyfish in there, but not the ones with tentacles, just the the I, I used to call them watermelon jellies because they're yeah. shaped like a watermelon. And I you think were... that's what it was. I think it was, it was it got it it kind of broke up and I picked it up and I think those suckers <laughs> those suckers are covered in acid and it burned you were my lips. Your, uh, you were pumping your lips up like those girls do on Facebook when they're yeah when That's they're doing the is, right? <laughs> you're making that. <laughs> it burned for he's an taking, hour. He's taking those selfies. <laughs> really. Burned for an hour. So I'm not going to do that again. No. <laughs> after, after years and years and years, I'm not mm -hmm. going to do it again. Lip plumpers. <laughs> oh, I got something else. Check this out. What's this that? is, oh, this is cool. Let me see if I can. I don't have my extra wire on my camera. I have to pick it up and bring it over. I got it in the tank. Right, I fly in Mayan. I fly in Mayan said scribbles notes, hold sea horses in between duck lips. Right on. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Now, what kind of puffer is that? It's called a spiny box puffer. And he's all puffed up. It Will it hurt for you to take him out like that? Just no, ask and just keep no, wondering. No, it doesn't hurt. Why is he deflating already? Oh, man, I didn't know that was a saltwater tank you had under there, or is that fresh water? No, it's saltwater. The two bottom ones. I, oh, I, I went, didn't know it was Yeah, I did, a, I did a series of videos in which I converted them from fresh to saltwater. That's neat. I've had them set up for a couple of months now. And I got a bunch of shrimp and some other hermit crabs today that went in them, along with some pike fish and snails. I like the pike fish. They're cool. Yeah. So, oh, let's see. You got something today. You want to show off your prize? I sure will. I've got a little baby that I found on the road the uh, day before yesterday. I'm going to release him, but I had to keep him for a couple of days. Just High flying Mayan. Hold seahorse in between duck lips. Right. <laughs> Jelly stingers. It's been a long time since I've seen a little baby one. I've seen plenty uh, of about 40 pound ones, but look at this little guy. Oh, isn't that incredible? Look. Oh, so yes. cool. You got to keep them. You gotta keep He's them. so cute. Oh, but I want you to fall down. Very you cool. Can y'all see this little alligator snapper? I've shared him with a couple of my friends, but this is his first debut. <laughs> Very nice. 
I was out this morning catching him crickets. I got, he, I got one look too. Look at that one. I love it. That's a it's, musk turtle, right? Or wait, no, what you say? Not, no, this is a Reeves. It's a South That's American. That's the Reeves. Okay. South American. It's also called a a wood uh, South American wood turtle. Those are really cool because they're really aquatic cool. and land. Yeah, aren't they? they're aquatic. Yeah, they are, and they stay fairly small. They don't get real big. You'll get about double this size. Oh, little fella. Let's see if I can hold him up like this so y'all can see him. I love it. I love it. That is so neat. See his little shell? He's got, what is it, like the, the ridges? What makes him the difference between the common and the alligator? Yeah. It's the way their know. shell is made. Of course, they have right. real big heads. And they have real big bites, too, when they get big. They do, indeed. <laughs> I have another turtle, but I haven't seen it in a couple of days. I have a musk. Um, now I like the mustard. That we got. It's about, it's about that big, and I put oh. it in this, I put it in this tank, in a, a sort of few days ago. It's probably just down on the bottom. I don't think it can get out. But you know, they're basically a fully aquatic turtle, aren't they? I mean, they come yeah. out some, but yeah, they are. Yeah, they will pretty well live in the water. They'll come out yeah. and spawn. That's about it. And is it uh, MD Fish Tanks? He's got that one little one named uh, Timmy. He always shows and does his turtle tanks for Name MD. I love Timmy. We love Timmy. <laughs> uh, I love who is this? Il Kebabaro Keba Keba Supremo. I have I them like too. What is Chris well, drops hello. in the farmer's well, not poison to touch. No, it's not poison to touch. <laughs> Our Amazon puffers have to go one. after larger mystery snails. Um, yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. We've had a few people sneak in. I have a zoo today. We do. Capabaro. <laughs> Capabaro Supremo. You have them too. What do you have, Capabaro? What are you referring to? Turkles? Love turtles, turtles, yes. Love turtles. That's what Patricia's, got me into the hobby. Patricia's going to get her hand puppet out and compete. You can come on up <laughs> with your hand puppet if you want to. Yes, yeah, she'll we'll, come up. We'll, we'll be happy to entertain you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it keeps them outside. The food That's what liver. I look for to is having a, an outdoor turtle pond. I want an outdoor pond so bad. Oh, hey, Kenny. Yeah. And Danny, how are y'all doing? Danny Ken. <laughs> Alec the Nice is here. Alec. Sam Shepard. Alec is saying I have one discus that's being bullied a lot. Shall I put uh -oh. her in another tank? Hmm. Yeah, you can do that. I'll tell you what you ought to do. If you're going to do that, put her in with one or two others. Put her, Make it a group of three. Maybe the three smallest ones. Um, discus tend not to do real well in multiple sizes. There's some, some discussion that the bigger ones may release a hormone that stunts the growth of the small ones. I don't know that really? that's true, but I know smaller discus in with big discus tend not to do as well. So you might consider setting up a second dis discus display, perhaps something smaller for your smaller discus. Dooby doo, Danny Ken. Oh, can you come up here and see us? Hey, Petraman. Petraman, like I'm, I'm waiting on the day Petraman comes up with us. <laughs> he was up last week. What last Friday? Came up last oh, week, yeah. last Friday, I think. Yeah. Had a, had a good time. It was, he saved my butt. I was that was Pompey right floor. here, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I was fine. Yes, yeah, Susan. Yeah, we're, we're praying for y'all. Those storms are supposed to be heading that way. Damn. Yeah, exactly. So glad to see you. 
Let's see. Father Fish helped my betta tore off some of his fins. When will they grow back? That was from Dreamer Crab Corner. Where are you? What? Give me a time. That stamp. is at six oh three. Hey five oh three. Hey Shanna. Yeah, uh, they may not. Um, they will heal and and heal over. If it's like a tear, it'll heal. Yeah. But very often, if it's part of the fin uh, that's cut off or torn off, it's it will not grow back. If it's torn, they'll heal. If it's actually part of the tail or part of the fin missing, they, it'll heal, but it won't grow back. Hi, Maple Street. There's Maple Street. Oh, how nice. Hello, Maple Street. Nice to see you. Dreamer Craft Corner. Nice to see yeah, you, that's Dreamer Craft. That's who asked about the bed of fins. Hi, Janine. Oh, oh it cut. Oh, yes. If it's cut. A, if it's, is it cut off or just like a tear? Jane Campbell. Hi, Jane. The other thing that's good is to just make sure to keep them in like very clean water too, isn't it? Like do like you've got them in a yeah, spot. They, te they tend to get they tend to be susceptible to bacterial infection. So you want to guard yeah. against that. Um, keep them in a just a bare clean tank until they heal up and don't put food in that. Don't feed them until they're healed because the food will create bacteria. All right. Yes, yeah, it looks cut, cut off. off. Yeah, if it's cut off, it's it will heal, but it won't grow back. And make like, sure you, you don't know. have anything sharp in there. And if it does grow back, I want pictures. <laughs> Dreamer Craft Corner. Hello, hello. Looks cut off, right? Uh, ABC. What else? Yeah, he'll Let's live see. fine. Yep. Susan yeah, saying they're five. expecting flash flooding. Oh, that's nice. I can't say you're well. The I uh, the one at six oh five, Iberca Barrow. I don't know if I said that right. Supremo. I'm trying. Said I have five discus, five discus, raise them since basically they were fried. Stankler, Stefe, huh? Okay. There's Malik. Hello, Aqua Malik. Nice to see you. Good to have you here. Leo Contreras. Hey, Leo. Let's give Leo a wrench. All right. Hey, Orlando Pokey. Glad you made it. Orlando Pokey. I like A bunch that. of people just came in. Have not seen yeah, the seahorses. Yeah, let me show Can you I the seahorses. They haven't seen the seahorses. Oh, yeah. Look at these guys. Ames, if you're watching, look at these little guys. They are so precious. Malik, I want to see. He's got some pygmy seahorses. Let's see if we can... Recreate, recreate this. And y'all are welcome to come up and join us too. You want to pop in? Just click on that link in the that he's got pinned to the chat and come up and show off something. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. I showed off a baby snapping turtle. He's got pygmy seahorses. He beat me. <laughs> I thought I had something pretty cool and he got me. <laughs> Hi, Leo. Like and share. Thank you, Word Dunlap. Hi, Thomas. Thomas <laughs> is here. <laughs> yeah, Thomas Blisson just joined because of Malik. Thank y'all for coming over from Malik's channel. All right. And I missed the live stream. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get back over there, Malik. It's been so busy. Okay. Check this out. Look at this. In a wine glass. 
Okay, we have a pikefish, three pygmy seahorses. Is a, a little um, starfish in there again? No, he's not in there. No, he's not in there. Okay. Right. Look at those little things. They're incredible. They are incredible, Father Fish. So these are available. I'm going to sell these. I'm going to ship them oh, out tomorrow. They are. I'm going to ship them out tomorrow to the first buyer on them. They're fifteen dollars oh, each. Uh, and if you buy, I think I've got five. If you buy all five, I'll throw a pair of uh, pipefish in and a sea and a uh, starfish. Is that cool? He's, or what? Uh, red light robot said the female pipefish appears pregnant. That's the male. The oh, male the is male. like the, it's like the male seahorse. the The male pipefish carries the eggs, and yes, right. I think okay. so. I think he's carrying. <laughs> no, Thomas, we're not drinking them. <laughs> there is one. There's one seahorse that's carrying. See the fat one? He's got babies. They're they're smaller than. They're, they're not full grown. Um, I was surprised at how many little tiny ones I was catching. I mean, really tiny. Like they're, they're salt water, Malik. But you can keep them in a very, Father Fish was just explaining, like you can keep them in a very small container. Just yeah, like a goldfish them. bowl. You can keep them in a goldfish bowl. The flat side is good. Filter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. With this tongue filter, right? Malik says he wants them. Yes. You'll love them. They're wonderful. They're really easy to keep. Contact ABC. whoever wants them. Contact me at fatherfish at fatherfish.net on my email and uh, or PayPal. You go to PayPal uh, and pay for them direct. It's twenty five dollars shipping, fifteen each. If you get all five at 75 plus 25 is a hundred dollars. For a hundred dollars, you get a, a really nice shipment with a bunch of stuff in it. Oh, you'll get surprises. Including <laughs> some hermit crabs, like <laughs> fish, starfish. It'll be cool. Hundred bucks. First come, first serve. Only have one order. I will have more. Uh once Frank and I get out, we'll be able to get more, but We'll, we'll do that. Uh, let's some see. Special Malik, also, Malik says he also wants specific lump suckers. Can you get those too? Can you find them? No, I don't think so. No. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Hi, Steiner from Norway. Glad you're here. Steiner. Aim, Aim Spirit is here. Hi, Aim Spirit. She was ready for the, the start or the <laughs> all kind of great people. Thank you guys. Thomas Gillison. Hello, Thomas Gillison. Nice to see you. Uh, Leo wants to know how hard it is to keep a saltwater tank. Well, here, let me show you. I, I don't have my long wire on the speaker, so. I can't uh, run the camera. These are two saltwater tanks that I set up uh, roughly three months ago. Ames just came up. Um, <laughs> this one, this one was set up using existing deep substrate from a freshwater tank. This one was not, um, and they're both doing really well with minimal maintenance. The only thing I do is replace evaporation. That's absolutely all I've done. Ames. <laughs> there he is. Absolutely Hi. all I've done. Hi. Oh, look at that. This is Aww. Winsley Dale. There he is. Absolutely all I've done. Hi. Winsley your, I'm trying. Turn your sound off on your YouTube. There you go. There. Nice um, it was my TV. So this is Winsley Dale. She, he or she is very new to me. He's in an obnoxiously small tank because it's cycling. 
but the large 20 gallon freshwater tank is a cold tank, you know, 66 degrees or whatever. Yeah. Right. How do you cycle a cold tank? Just like you cycle a regular tank, right? Yeah, it's the same. It's exactly the same. No difference at all. Is there anything that I could do to speed it up? I know that's always a question, isn't it? Yeah, if you do it as a dirted substrate. But no, they have, dirt, and they have no. Pardon. Now you can't put substrate with this guy. He's too yes, young. You can. Yes, you can. How big is he? Oh. <laughs> Two, three inches. Yeah, he's that big. Inches. Yeah, you don't want to put gravel in, but you can put him on sand. He will not I eat the sand. Thought he would. Nope, not at all. Okay. They're not that. They're not that stupid. You know, <laughs> they live in. They live in. Uh, uh, they live over dirt. I mean, they're living in in uh, in in creeks or streams under uh, in caves. They also live in the wild. Um, you know, they're not going to eat. They're not going to eat the sand. And what little bit they might eat, they can pass through. But typically, they're not going to eat it. it they also grow. say it's for the cleanliness, but I would think that having, you know, something to work with the poop, like sand or, or well, dirt. Well, you know, exactly. If you do a deep substrate, then it will take care of all that because it'll break it down. Just treat it like a regular tank. Okay. Treat it like a dirted tank. They'll do absolutely fine in a dirty tank. Won't be a problem at all. Yes, but Father Fish, isn't he cute? <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love him. What's this is there? somebody. Oh, look at this. Oh, you... look at that Aren't beauty, you? baby. How pretty. Uh, the the axolotl's name is Winsleydale. Winsleydale, I love it. <laughs> I see. It's a, it's a kind of cheese that people on who follow Wallace and Gromit they know of them. Oh, yeah. How neat. That's fun. Look at oh, you. what a beautiful kitty. Look at you. You are beautiful. She's a bangle, a rescue. Yes. I had a bangle gorgeous. for 15 years. Oh. Hey, Susie. Q Aquatics is here. How are you, Susie? Her name is Kendall with a Y, Kendall. Oh, Very Kendall. nice. <laughs> She's All right, gorgeous. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Very bye nice. Bye. Thank you, Ames. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Sweet. <laughs> what a beautiful kitty. Oh, it's wow. Nice. Did you hear me say uh, Susie Q came in? I heard you say it. Yes. yes. We're Always done like 150% of what? I don't know what you're referring to, we're done like. Let's see. Who is he talking to? Oh, can Guppy handle 150% salinity? Oh yeah, like trend, like uh, converting them to salt water. Like I guess people do uh uh not mo not mo self in yeah 150%. You mean 50%? Um probably no. not. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. But um, Molly's can. Platty's might be able to. Molly's definitely can. Molly's a brackish water fish. Guppies, I don't think you're going to get away with it. Not 50%. 10% maybe. 15 <laughs> Saturday 20, cartoons. That must 20 be would scary. be pushing it. Right. Let's see, Father Fish. Okay, red light robot at 616 said, Father Fish, I dirted my first tank. It's doing exceptional. One month in, I also included green sand in the dirt and counted oh, nice. of African sand. Very good. I've not You're been not able to get any. Let's yeah, see. I, I would really like to use green sand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alec is saying uh, uh, select pet bulls are best for seahorses. 
They don't like corners or intense flow. They want very still water. Uh, a yeah. sponge filter is more than adequate. Uh, Trisha Powers asked, will adding wet ocean sand hurt my freshwater tank, or should I use the dry stuff? So, like, if you got sand from the beach, could you rinse it and use it in a freshwater tank? You, know, you can use it. The little bit of salt that it's going to add to the water really won't make any difference at all. What I would do, however, is use the dry sand for fresh water. Uh, the dry sand is going to be rain, rain washed. Um, it won't have salt in it at all. It'll be it'll be rinsed by rain, providing there's rain. Molly, you can use, you can use <laughs> desert sand. Somebody said to me the other day that um, uh, you mm. can't use desert sand in fish tanks, and it's which is kind of funny because desert the desert sand is sea bottom. It's sea bottom sand. That's where it came from. <laughs> so it's the same stuff. Same stuff. Hmm. It ain't made any different than anything else. It's a beautiful cat, isn't it? Liquid Zoo. Yeah. Only fins. Nice. Hey, Liquid Zoo. Got to turn you blue. Orlando Pokey. Yes. I have the world's Orlando. largest goldfish bowl. They're actually <laughs> illegal. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. How can a goldfish bowl be legal? Be illegal? Who's up? Sue Ann is here. Right. Hey, Sue Ann. Hello, hey, Hello. Sue. How Hi. are you? Nice to see you. How are Hi. you? Sue Ann is here. Good. How are you? Hey, Sue Ann. Hello, Hello. 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 Turn my team away. Nice to see you. What you got? How are you? Um, Good. How are you? I don't know how to do this, but turn my camera. Yeah, you got your camera right. You can turn down your volume on the other whatever. Yeah, turn the volume down on YouTube. And it'll get the echo. And you won't get a feedback. Thank you, King and Queens. What are we oh looking at? Oh my word! Thank Is that you. sitting on the floor? It. My lighting's bad. That's a two sixty-five. On the floor. That's cool. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's on the floor. It's got I like it. two canisters hooked up. It's got a big dog in the in the way. <laughs> yeah, I get two big fish in there. The Oscar that? the Oscar is the big one's sixteen inches. The little one's about eight inches. Wow. There's a kissing gourmet and some green terrors. That's beautiful. There's a 17-inch nice. pleco. Um, I kind of have a little bit of MTS. <laughs> That's okay. You're in the right place. Oh, you do indeed. Look at this. <laughs> nice. 17-inch pleco. Oh, very nice. I kind of have a little bit of MTS. 33 on the bottom, 55 on top. Nice. <laughs> Super nice. I'm I'm trying here. It's not lit up. <laughs> that's a 75 right now. That's my um, a hole tank. There's only there's only right. one fish in that tank. <laughs> you got some big tanks. That's I know about really those nice. tanks. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise I have, known as butthead tanks. <laughs> King and Queen Cichlids, thank you so much. I have seven more upstairs, but that's that's quite the trek. So that's pretty oh, nice. Goodness. I like it, Sue Ann. Thank you. I'll try to come yeah. in next time when I have them lit up better. I wasn't quite prepared tonight. That's quite hey, all right. Thank you, Happy you did. thank you so much. Nice to see yes. you. Thanks for having me. All, all right. Thank Bye you. for now. Bye. <laughs> right, the a hole tank. <laughs> Roxanne calls it a, a butthead tank. <laughs> butthead tank, right? Roxanne would. Right. Yeah. Oh, Love Roxanne. Aquatic. What else? Uh, ABC Aquatic Biotope Creation says, Father Fish, I used to breed dwarf seahorses that I collected in the Gulf of Mexico years ago. They yep. are extremely rewarding to keep. Also, just heat, just a heads up, they will reproduce every 18 days. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really cool. 13 days, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, they're very, they're very prolific fish. Very prolific. Yeah, I mean, Sam, they're really they're just they're really wonderful. They're they're super easy to keep. They're not at all like the uh, uh, the big seahorses. The big seahorses can be very difficult. These pygmies are just so easy and so forgiving. They're just they're wonderful. And it's it's strange that they're not in the in the hobby to the extent that they were many years ago, uh, because they're easily bred in captivity. I think the reason is the people who do seahorses are used to doing the erectus um, that, that they could get twenty five bucks a pop for. Now probably forty. It's everything wow. is going up. Um, so you know. It's it's a money game, I guess. But these are so simple. I'm gonna get another culture of them going. Uh now that I've got a finally got a decent source. And we'll see if we can get some tank rays. I definitely gotta get one. That would be something great to set up in one of these little tanks behind me. I've got a little two gallon right here that my little snapping turtle's in right now. Yeah, that well, well that's good, good for him. Yeah, stuff. get another one like that. That's perfect. Can you <laughs> quit those and watch? Been catching you guys lately. You're doing some cool oh. stuff. I really appreciate it. Thank you very they much. You guys check out their channel, King and Queen Cichlids. Absolutely. Scott and Liz are amazing. Love you guys. Uh, Fish Kid 61. Could I ask <laughs> how you deem rocks that you have collected aquarium safe? Yeah. Now that's a really excellent question. It is. The the way I deem rocks aquarium safe is let me show you i find a rock that i like and i put it in the tank that's the, and and if everything goes fine then i know it was a good decision i never and they live, if they live it's good <laughs> really i i deem it good if it, if when i put it in Everything's fine. And so far, my record, my record on this, uh, after um, 70 years of putting rocks in tanks, I have <laughs> never had, I have never had one rock that I put in a tank create a problem. Never one That's time. I've just heard people say put vinegar on if you, them and if they if bubble. You're collecting and it, the yeah, that's because the people who do that are trying to maintain some kind of a pristine um, <laughs> pristine tank that has no life in it. You know, the whole idea of a fish tank is to have life in it. You're not going to be <laughs> able to keep your fish alive if they're the only thing alive in it. Let me say that again. That bears repeating. You're not going to be able to keep your fish alive if the only thing that's alive in the tank is the fish. Think about that. They require a web of life in order to be able to survive, in order for the environment that they're living in to be whole and to be healthy and, and, to, be, uh, and to be able to support life. If the environment they're in cannot support life, it certainly is not going to support fish, which is why people lose their fish. They lose it for two reasons. Number one, they're trying to keep a sterile tank. And number two, guess what? They're feeding their fish. Too much. You feed fish in a sterile tank, and what do you get? You get pollution. Yeah. You get, you get a bacterial explosion. That kills the fish. That's why fish die, because they're being kept in environments that are not healthy for living creatures. They're unhealthy for living creatures. You can't keep you can't keep a fish in a gallon of sterile water. For one thing, it's not going to stay sterile. Right. It will become. It will, it will begin developing all manner of things, the first few of which will explode in growth and kill the fish. It's not that they're bad, it's that they don't have any competition. And competition is the key because competition creates 
biodiversity, which creates balance. In a balanced tank, you have a wide range of biodiverse, uh, a diversity of animal life, a very biodiverse environment that are struggling with each other, living with each other, finding niches with each other, forming a web that becomes very stable and very strong that is able to support life. That's how nature works. It doesn't work by one little thing living in a drop of water. One little thing living in a drop of water will die. Right. There's nothing to support it. It can't eat. It can't become food. It just dies. So consider that and consider, consider bringing as much life and as much of a wide variety of life as you possibly can into your tank. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of doing the very thing that is most needful to do. And natural. People are afraid of doing the best thing that they can do. Don't be afraid of doing the best thing you can do. Don't do that. <laughs> you find a rock or a piece of wood out in the woods that's been there for 5,000 years and you think it's going to kill something? <laughs> Jeez. No, it's not. Pick it up and put it in your tank. And now in your new video that you've got coming up soon, that's what you're going to talk about, right? You're going to talk about how to set up that a food, with web. The a food web, yeah, yeah exactly. Food web right. Y'all look out for that. Absolutely. That's coming up. You betcha. King and Queen, did I? I didn't make oh, them out of it. Oh, they need to be blue. Yes, they need to be blue. I just Absolutely. did it right. <laughs> Scott and Well, Liz. let's see. They're saying uh, keep all Central and South Americans and Palomas oh to the Green Terror, which is the Rivolatus. We've also right. got Fish Kid 61 that's been here. I think maybe you could make that one blue too. <laughs> been did. saying some nice things. Where is he? Fish Kid 61. Let's see. Uh, where did I just see him? Well, I think I did. 624. Well, okay. Oh, yeah. he's, he's the guy who asked about the rocks. Okay. You got it. Hey, Jason. If you're in the blue, that just means you're part of the Father Fish Shoal. <laughs> right. No special requirements. Just that we love you and glad you're here. Sue Ann, so happy you came up. Thank you for doing that. Yes, that was awesome. Aqua Negro. Uh, Tam Shepherd, I came home to one of my crabs deceased. Can I bury it in the sand or remove it? If it's small, bury it. If it's six inches long, Get it out of there. <laughs> if it's a big blue crab, get it out. If it's a little cook it tiny in. thing, <laughs> go ahead and bury it. You Got just you, Marty. Yeah, really. <laughs> I think we're all... You're welcome, Jason. Glad y'all are all part of the fish fam here. Love you guys. And I think we're out of time, Father Fish. I believe you're right. Uh, <laughs> Ames, Ames wants so to know fun. if you can put if you can put acid on it to see if it bubbles. Uh, not well, you can. I mean, you can do I've that. I've heard that. Yeah, the muric acid. Think, yeah, if you're going to be putting your if you're going to be putting in in a in a um, a container full of uh, muriatic acid, then you know you don't have to test it first. Just dump it in there. Your tank is not it's, it doesn't contain muriatic acid. So, the fact that muriatic acid can make it bubble doesn't mean that water will. <laughs> you never know what he's going to say. <laughs> 503. Thank you, sir, very much. What are the benefits Thank of you, art camp in an aquarium outside of aesthetics? Well, mm -hmm. it creates a natural environment. Right. Um, and it also creates an environment of which things can grow, things like algae that everybody yep. hates. And are nevertheless highly desirable 
you know, there are a lot of fish that depend on algae as food. Um, uh, in addition to which, it creates a natural environment. So, like that 503. Have you checked out 503's channel? Oh, yes. I love Shannon. Yeah, she is a great... Isn't she? she yeah. is delightful. You got Absolutely. that right. Yeah. Oh, aquamolic, so true, Father Pitch. <laughs> aquamolic knows, Molic knows, he knows. Yep. <laughs> you guys watch his, uh, I'm going to drop Malik's channel too. I'm trying, anybody in blue can drop uh, channel links if y'all want to. Yeah, To absolutely. help support each other. And we've got 53 likes. Thank you guys. I think we had over 60 watching at one time. Really is nice. Awesome. Um, the thing about um, something that dies in your tank, if you've got a deep substrate, if you have a dirted tank, you can push it down in the dirt and it'll simply become part of the life cycle. If it's big, you don't want to do that because it could overwhelm the system. Um, too much of a good thing, I guess. Hey, Danny. Danny, Wes is, is here. I want to call you Weshby for some reason. Fish Every time I see said, Fish Danny. Said, this is the first channel that has moderated me, made you a moderate. Well, good job. Oh. Good job. We me just, too. <laughs> we're, we're good to everybody. Everybody's a moderator for us. That's right. That's, that's because we take care of each other. Hey, Bates, and nice to see you. Bateson. Let's see. Danny Wish. Oh, Danikin Danny. comes on tonight. Danikin's on tonight. That's right. What time is yep. that? Nine o'clock? Our time? I think it's at nine o'clock. Y'all check out Danikin Aquatics at nine o'clock. Six o'clock. For a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Okay. We have run, uh, run over. We never run out of gas around here. No. Uh, red light robot, the baby whale mormorids prefer solitary or groups. They prefer groups. They do much better in groups. They are groupies. Groupies. Shanna. <laughs> I've been called a cheerleader. Says, Shanna is a ball of fire. Yes, she is. <laughs> she I'm is. Here to tell you. <laughs> here to tell you. Fish kid, how's your baby lamb doing? We need to hear about that. Oh, that's too precious. All right, guys, we're going to go away. I will be here tomorrow morning. <laughs> we'll go away. Sunday. Be here tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll see you all in the morning. Come on Love over to Discord. We're going to continue this madness on Discord. <laughs> so come on over. I got to pop in. Soon on Discord. Here's the Discord Bye, link. Tam just posted it. Click on Thank that, you, come on over and join us. Thank you, Tim. Bless you all. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Mary. Bye, very much. Love you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs>